Excel allows you to create controls. They are very simple tools, but great tools for simulations, for what-if analysis. Let me give you a few simple examples. Like in this case, we have in column A and in column B a series of observations for the hemoglobin percentage and the red blood cell count. And the relationship between those two is more or less linear. So if you want that linear trend line there, you just right click on any of these observation couples, insert a trend line of the linear type and make sure you display the equation on the chart in this case. So what, what did we do? We put in cell H2 the percentage of hemoglobin and then we calculate the red blood cell count based on this formula 1.286 etc. That is the slope times the x value minus the intercept. So if I, when I change the hemoglobin percentage, then automatically the red blood cell count will update. Now we are going to control H2 through a scroll bar. So when I plot these two values, which is a set of coordinates, on this chart, that is this dot at this point, and I bring up with my control the hemoglobin percentage, and you see a nice what-if analysis if the hemoglobin percentage goes up, then also that line goes up along the linear trend curve. How do you create such a control? Make sure you have on your menu the Developers tab. If you don't have it yet, it's not by default, you have to go to File, Options, and then on the Customize Ribbon section, make sure that the Developer tab is turned on. By default it's not. So from now on you can go to the Developers tab and you can insert a control. Form controls and ActiveX controls. Go for the ActiveX controls. And one of these options is called scroll bar. You click on it, you draw it somewhere. Be careful now, you see that this thing is floating on your sheet. In other words, don't click on the sheet yet, for we have to talk to this guy. We have to get its properties. Developer, properties. And we get the properties screen for this scroll bar. And what are the most important parts of that? You can set a maximum value. You can set a minimum value. They always have to be integers. And the, the next very important one is what is the linked cell? You click on that property and type in there the cell you want this thing to be linked to. So let's say in my case cell O2. You have to really type it. Don't click on the sheet please. And when you set that property you don't need the properties box anymore unless you call it later on again. But there is one more step you need to know and that is that your developer Design mode should be turned off, so you are no longer working on a floating object, a floating control. When you turn that off, those buttons around that thing will disappear. So now when I move that thing, you will see that cell 01, 02 is regulated by this control, because I didn't change the minimum and maximum values. And they always go in steps of one unless you change the property small change and large change. The large change is, goes by five or something like that. That's what I did here. So that's why I was able to regulate that control. As I said, com controls like these work with integers. But sometimes you need decimals. 
in this case I have observations for at a certain time lapse the glucose levels in mole per minute goes downwards and we, we put a curve there we add a trend line and the trend line is of the power type in this case display the equation on the chart etc so we did the same thing again we regulate the time through a control and the metabolic rate is calculated based on this formula 10 times x to the power of minus 0.419 but in this case I need an extra step because I would like the time to go into decimals so I need an in-between step I make the control uh, hook up to that cell and then in the real cell I say that is F18 divided by 1000 and I set this control to the cell F18 let's go into the design mode and the properties and I click on that control and I get the properties of that scroll bar so the, the max is set to 180 the min to 20 and as I said it's it goes always up by integers so the large change is one and the small change I also set to one okay but the linked cell in this case is F18 this one and the other one refers to this one by a calculation don't forget to turn the design mode off and from now on we should be able to move that thing around it's it's a nice tool for what if analysis it follows that trend line according to the equation on the chart I'm just giving you simple examples how you can use what if analysis or controls for your own simulations one more as an example moving average this time I have done an up down control it goes up by one it goes down by one and when I move this thing up you will see I get the moving average based on a three day period one two three average four five six and I set the max to ten I'm going to give you three more examples of controls that I discussed in my book simulations here is one of those 80 uh, say we have two alleles and they each have a same frequency 0.5 so generation after generation they will remain the same unless one of the two alleles has a selective advantage over the other so in this case I'm going to bring up the selective advantage for control for the allele to the left and if I did something similar for the other allele then you will see that over the time over generations your frequencies change enormously and you can simulate that with controls to a, if you need more explanation of what is going on here look at my book another simple example is you have two rabbits that you need for your laboratory and they procreate so after a while they will go up let's say they procreate with a factor two per generation so we start with two we have four eight sixteen etc what would happen if their procreation rate would go up just a little bit notice how much food you would need after 25 generations to explain all of this again look at my book and finally another type of control that says when does your fiscal year start in October then it runs from October to September and it will calculate automatically in which quarter a certain sales was according to that fiscal year 
If I say no, my fiscal year starts in May, it will automatically adjust. How to do all of this, you can find in my book, Excel simulations. It has 80 different simulations. I showed you only five or six for the rest. I would suggest you buy that book. It is fantastic. It gives you all the tools you need to run those simulations, to understand them. It's, uh, it also allows you to download files, to test yourself, and to find the final results. You can find those Excel simulations genesispc.com will show you so it is about gambling statistics genetics financial simulations expansion situations monte carlo simulations iterations and then some extras that you will benefit from it will explain all of this extensively